This is how I started my summer vacation, a very long vacation in the summer of 2020. Yes, during COVID, where there was really nothing else to do but wait and see what happens, I started a building project. You see, I was retired. I had nothing to do. By this time, we knew it was going to be a long time before the real world came back. I had done just about all I could at home to keep myself occupied. I needed something else to do to keep me busy. So I started a project building a chair. And let's see how that turned out. I wanted to build something interesting, something that would really hold my interest during the summer. So I decided to build this chair. I'd never built a chair, any chair before, so this was my first one. I know what you're thinking. I probably should have tried something a little bit easier and maybe built one from some plans, but I didn't have any plans. This is my freehand rendering of a shell chair. I typed up some plans and made a few notes based on photos I've seen online. Then I made a trip to the hardware store, yeah, with my mask, gloves, and even sanitizer in hand. I purchased a 4 by 8 sheet of 3 quarter inch MDF to build a set of molds, and I used 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood for the chair itself and a whole lot of glue. I was ready to start my project. I broke out my tools, borrowed space from our two-car garage, and set up shop, and shot my very first video, not knowing that I would later start my own YouTube channel someday. The first task at hand was to build molds to cast the chair parts. I had never bent wood before, but I thought this might be a good way to do it. I decided to start with the chair back, as it was the smallest and the easiest piece to bend. I created a pattern out of 1 8 inch hardboard for the birch plywood and then freehanded a mold design to bend it the way I thought it should look. I was pretty excited to see my first piece fresh out of the mold and it came out pretty nice. Granted, I did bend it that much, but my concept of how to make these pieces and build the mold, I was excited to push on for more difficult pieces. I used a standard title bond wood glue no sponsors here. There was nothing particularly special about it. It was just glue. When I do this again, and I will do it again, I think I might use something like Title Bond 3. It has a longer set time and maybe even get a roller to spread it faster. As you can imagine, I had to spread a lot of glue quickly and sandwich four sheets of 1 8 inch plywood together. Well, once again, I had pretty good luck with building the mold for the seat. I rough cut each piece to the approximate shape, glued them all together with the mold, and once dried, I trimmed the pieces with a jigsaw, sanded, and filled some of the gaps with wood glue. They looked pretty good. Two of the easier pieces complete, I had to figure out the more complicated bends. I had no idea how to make those turns, but I had plenty of time to think through a process. I experimented with using a wet towel to soak the wood for about an hour where it would needed to bend the most. I wish I would have known what a steam box was at this point. I had no clue. I didn't learn about that till well after I built this chair. I cut pieces of MDF to build the mold and actually I think I overbuilt this mold. But I'd never done this before. This was new to me so I did what I thought was right. I started with the easier bend for the backrest then I modified the mold to do the more difficult bend for the backrest. So I kind of used the same mold to build the two pieces. Slowly but surely, I worked through each piece. Two back pieces, two leg pieces. Just those four pieces, that was all I needed. Again, using every single available clamp I had in the garage to hold them together. I was pleased with the results of the two front legs as well and I knew I was in the home stretch of making this project really happen. I glued both of the leg pieces together and then both of the back pieces together before the final trimming and sanding and finishing. I think that made sense. In hindsight, I think I would have liked to at least finish some of these pieces before I put them together and sand them and then maybe finish them again. The, the problem was I was hard to get in some of these cracks with 
uh, an oil stain or a polyurethane as I did that. At this point, all four assemblies were finished and I put two coats of natural Danish oil on all four pieces. I did follow that up with two coats of a clear polyurethane, which gave it a really nice sheen. Now I was ready to assemble the chair. All that effort in building those molds, soaking the wood, gluing the parts, trimming, sanding, no, no directions, no plans, no nothing. Well, it came together. The only problem was I didn't know how I was going to hold this together. I didn't know what angle I should have the seat or the back. I had to kind of figure it out. I kind of mocked up the chair with some clamps to hold the pieces together, try to see if the angles were right, see if it looked good. Got brought my wife out, got her opinion. All It's all about design, you know. And then I found these binding post screws at a local hardware store. They have a big flat head on each end and they just hold anything in between together really, really well. I wanted to cover up the screw heads. Uh, they didn't look too bad, but I just thought the chair would be more comfortable if I made a few cushions. So I used some eighth inch hardboard, made a pattern out of that, put some batting and material on it. And for the first time, I used Super 77 spray adhesive. This stuff is awesome. And that did the trick. That helped me build the cushion. And then I put some Velcro on the chair and the cushion and it stuck together. Here's the final product. It actually is very, very comfortable and it holds my weight. Here I am reading a book that was gifted to me from my son, Honest Labor by Charles Hayward, a carpenter. This was the most rewarding project at a very difficult and uncertain time in our lives. I kept this chair for about a year. It reminded me of some difficult times, but also a new beginning. Living through the COVID experience inspired me to move forward. Eventually, I sold the chair for about a hundred bucks on Craigslist. About, it cost me about twice that to build it. Well, time to move on. You know, if you enjoyed today's video, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. I enjoy getting that feedback. And if you're interested in seeing additional projects, feel free to subscribe to my channel. These are two things that keep me going and I want to continue to do builds. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.